information resources and faster and more reliable technology. Higher performance communication resources and faster... Uh, children looking around, so nobody's going to see me in a wet t-shirt, don't worry. But we're going to play a game and uh, the winner will get a t-shirt. Not this particular one, but just like this one. We're going to talk about, if we have time, we're going to talk about potential risks of developing Node.js. Uh, although this is not the uh, prime goal of the presentation. We only have 30 minutes. All right, let's go. How did we come up with the idea? Well, a couple of my colleagues, actually. It wasn't me. Uh, they were at um, Black Hat a couple of years ago. They um, you know, were walking around and saw a big wall with code snippets on it and a bunch of people just staring at that wall. Well, it turns out they were looking, trying to find vulnerabilities in, in other people's code. Right? Have you ever seen things like that? At, at, uh, it's pretty cool, right? Now, at that same conference, a study came out that um, by OLASP, no less, that um, the top of the CISO concerns around the country, around the world probably, is that developers don't have a lot of security training. They're not trained in developing secure code. There isn't enough awareness of the need to develop secure code. So, put one and one together, and we have the Game of Hacks website. We built a game uh, for developers to test their application security knowledge. Right? We launched it at, um, again, Black Hat in 2014. In the first 24 hours, we had over 35,000 players, uh, responses. Really caught us by surprise completely. Didn't think it was, uh, you know, check marks is not really a big household name. We don't command a whole lot of attention from media. Uh, since then, it's been over 300,000 games played. The game is actually still up, available, free, completely free, no sign ups needed. So, actually, let's take a look. Um, gonna switch to the browser. This is how it works. You, know, you can play by yourself. You can challenge your colleagues. It's always more fun. Uh, oh, great, I should have done. Kind of like some popular TV shows or some trivia games, right? Right? You look at the code, you pick the answer that you think is correct. Well, I can't really read the code, I don't know about you. So I'm gonna pick one. And it's either right or wrong. By the way, this is, yep, oops. The answer was wrong. So the idea, of course, is to answer as many questions as you can in, in the shortest possible time. You get points for doing that, and if you when your name is at the top of the leaderboard. Well, what could go wrong, right? When you, when you invite, uh, when you, you kind of talk about this at the hackers conference, right, the Black Hat, invite hackers to uh, play a game against others, right? So let's see. I'm going to go back to the presentation. I do encourage you to check that game out. Right? So what else was behind this development? Um, it wasn't just a game. We actually developed it using new to us uh, techniques at the moment. Uh, we wanted to extend our services to cover Node.js, for example, so we used Node.js. Node.js was new to, uh, to our development team. Uh, we also de decided that the game definitely would be attacked, 
right? So we tried to plant a few honeypots to see what the hackers would go after first. Not everything actually was planned on purpose. I admit, some things uh, did surprise us. But so let's talk about what happened, right? Um, these are some messages from the from the message board, right? Um, see that some of this was not very flattering. Some was okay, but uh, these are kind of high scores. Notice the problem. None of these high scores look real, right? You can't get that much, that many points. So let's see how how this happened, right? It's a game of hacks architecture. There's a web client, JavaScript web client. There's Node.js on the, on the server hosted by Heroku. Scores are users are kept on a MongoDB um, database. Pretty simple, right? Uh, anybody has apps that that look similar to this one? Right? Probably not that uncommon. Right. On the actual client page, you have question, you have a question, you have source code, um, you know, kind of object of the question. You have the question itself, answers, um, the count, score, difficulty level, uh, and the timer. And pretty simple. These are all kind of objects in the client side JavaScript. So the first problem was that uh, we didn't actually keep track of which answers were answered, right? So what happened was that um, there was a call back to the server to submit an answer. Turned out you could actually call this over and over again, right? You didn't have to, to run the client. So um, once you figure out the right answer, you could just call it and call it and call it and get points and get points and get points. What's the mitigation? Well, you actually add a flag whether this answer has been submitted or not, and so that prevents somebody from trying multiple times. Seems kind of logical, but well, it's always good to have somebody else find it for you, right? Interesting makes life interesting. Timer. In, uh, in the first version of the app, the timer was handled by the client-side JavaScript. You know, it's a 60 second timer. You, uh, you, put, you know, submit answer plus time spent on the answer as part of the request to the server. What could possibly go wrong? Well, JavaScript, if you know, uh, runs on the client, doesn't really take a whole lot to modify the JavaScript that runs on the client. So you can submit any time that you want with your answer, right? Negative, very, very uh, low. Um, it was all being, uh, it was all build, being done by um, by users. So. Um, App, send answer, answer one, and time spent, negative billion, or whatever it is, 10 billion. Um, so you see the hacker community is very helpful, right? They kind of tell each other how to, how to hack the game. Right? It's pretty cool. So we had to modify the game a little bit and start computing time on the server. There's certainly a possibility for uh, a lag being introduced. Right, but you know, with decent Wi-Fi and decent internet connection, that's typically not an issue. Right. Keep that in mind for your own development. This is uh, all for your um, benefit. Now, what else? Now, these are kind of things we thought about, right, in, in advance. But um, there's an interesting find that somebody did. And you play this game, and it, you know, actually there's a mobile-friendly website too. If you play it on an iPhone, 
you can kind of hold down your finger to, to the web browser, and it stops the time. Right? So you can pause, figure out the correct answer, and then click it. Now that, I have to say, I, I really would, had no clue to expect, couldn't expect that. So. Hacking the hack. All right, so I mentioned the contest. This is going to be a different type of presentation. I'm actually going to encourage you to get your phones ready, laptops on people, connect to Wi-Fi. We're going to play a game. Uh, how many of you have never written a single line of code? Mm, nobody admits to that, but uh, that's fine. So we'll find out. I promise that um, some, some questions, everybody's going to be able to answer some questions. So here's what you're going to have to do. Um, You're going to have to go to kahoot.it and enter the game pen. And uh, while I'll give everybody a few minutes. Um, and in the meantime, enjoy the, the goats, web goats if you want to prefer. So let's see, I'd say we probably have about, what, 50 people here? 40? I expect that number to match the number of players. Fascinating, isn't it? Was that a question at the back in the back? No? 46, 47, look at that. Okay. You can still enter, I think. Hey, wait, where's my, where's my. All right, 10 questions. Same idea as Game of Hacks, right? You have to answer. Uh, you can't change your uh, um, answer after, after you've selected one of the answers. Sorry, don't try to, do, to use your back button. Um, okay, let's get on with it. I told you everybody can answer some, some of these questions. Yeah, let's see. Last chance to join. These are warm up questions, okay? Warm up questions, don't worry. So, whoever is doing fine is doing fine, right? Whoever is fine is doing fine. So, now it's the real stuff, right? Thousand points at stake. Oh, can you see it actually? Oh, I didn't think about it. Do I need to make the code larger? Hard to see? Yeah. All right, nicely done, everybody. Um, what's the key combination to zoom in? Somebody remember Control Plus, is that? 
control shift plus. No? Uh, all right. Now I think it might be better. Oh! Wait, I'm not playing. How did that happen? Ah, well, namesake in the audience. Great. Is it better back there? A little? So the previous one was pretty simple, right? There was a format string, so no check what kind of format uh, string you were using, therefore unformatted, uncontrolled format string is the vulnerability. Um, Path traversal. Anybody tell me what can happen when you do that? You can open any, any file you want. You can overwrite any file you want. Um, you know, basically, whatever the privilege level of your application. So uh, what happens? Serious stuff. All right. Hey, what happened to Igor? Can do better. Does anybody actually remember this very politically incorrect uh, cartoon? Okay. I don't know. I, I never. I, I don't think my kids actually have ever seen that. Bonus question: What's the uh, uh, what's the mouse name? There you go. Good. All right, I see we have a clear -er winner. Ah, this is nice. Uh, the questions, by the way, are random out of the database, so I don't really know what's, what's going to be next every time I play. Same, same with Game of Hacks. There's a big database of questions, and um, you know, it's, it's some sort of random order. I'll have to say these are sort of a beginner level questions, right? Right? Ah, how many of you got uh, uh, confused by all the SQL statements in there? There you go. Igor is pretty close getting. So, oh, you know what? I should have talked about that. When client randomizes the um, um, the answer order, right? Actually, the server sends the questions to the client, and the client presents them in random order uh, in order to prevent. Script, uh, scripts running, right? If a client does it, there's no way for the server to match what was um, what was number one, what was number two, uh, or A, B, C, whatever it is. But um, yeah, good, uh, good try. Questions? There you go. Things back on track. So. Where should we validate the answer? Any cultural references? Anybody here? Yeah. That should be easy, right? All right, those of you who said server, Good answer. Those who said client, think of what could happen, right? Uh, what happened to our game of hacks, right? You can submit any answer you want.
And uh, I think we have the last, no, next to last. Mm. I think this might be the um, code snippet straight from our game. You just have to pay attention. You didn't really have to look at the code, I have to say. You just have to pay attention to the presentation. And now, you also had to pay attention to the, converse, uh, to the presentation. All right, so I have, um, as I mentioned, I have t-shirts here. See me after the, actually, raise your hand. Who's, uh, you know, nicely done. I have a couple others, so who's number two and number three? All right, thanks, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. The rest of you hope you enjoyed it, but the presentation's not over yet. Don't, don't worry, hold on. I mentioned we're going to talk about a couple of Node.js. Do I have five minutes? Who's the, where is the folks running the show? I guess I do. There's nobody else here. What is specific to Node.js? We talked about a couple of uh, logical flaws, uh, flaws in the app that um, sort of allowed hackers to, uh, to, to, to hack the app. I, I really want to say hack, but um, um, abuse or bypass the verification of the rules. So what are things that, that you should remember about uh, programming in Node.js in general? Node.js is a single threaded, um, has single threaded al architecture. There's an event loop that calls out workers to do actual job. For non-programmers among you, this is the metaphor, right? There's a single thread order taker and maybe several people who go around and fulfill the orders. The problem is that if the single thread is um, uh, busy, right, the order taker is busy, there are no more orders coming in and customers aren't being served. So, the attack is a denial of service. I see, right, not everybody is laughing, but you should be, I mean, it's uh, actually, uh, uh, kind of um, you know, very uh, appropriate um, a picture here. Now, a very simple piece of code like that with sufficiently large uh, bound boundary condition can actually hold up your kick-ass machine for yeah seconds which is typically enough to do denial of service if you do it on a large scale. Right? So the key is not to put any computationally intensive code inside the main thread in Node.js. It's the first thing that um, you'll probably get burned on, um, but yet people still get burned on it. And um, I guess the protection also is to verify any input, especially if these boundary conditions come from the user. Is my is 3 p.m. here? No. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll um, we'll run quickly from a couple of others. Uh, just actually one more. So another interesting thing about Node.js is that uh, it's all JSON-based, right? Um, uh, language, you can do queries 
against databases based on JSON objects. You can, you can easily manipulate JSON object, right? So typically, you can use actual JSON values for the find method. Now, this, if you do this, let's say to validate a username and password, it's very easy to bypass this, um, this validation by supplying you know, something that actually looks, uh, will be interpreted by, uh, by the database as a code. And uh, the conditions that will be interpreted by database as code. So what do people do? The typical defense against this is to find the user first and then compare it to, to the password stored for that user. But remembering that, JS, uh, that uh, Node.js is a single, um, single threaded app, it's easy actually to supply a regex for that last password parameter that will hold up your server by, by this big crypt compare hold up your server for a couple seconds. It's also not good. Leads to um, um, denial of service, re yeah, regex denial of service. Sorry, we didn't have much time to, um, yeah, to, to, to go in details into this, but a um, couple of takeaways. Um, applications, application development is difficult. Secure application development is even more difficult. Um, Developers learn much better when they are part of a game, right? Especially if they compete with each other. So, um, anytime you have a chance to in, uh, uh, integrate elements of games into education, take it. And also, you know, all different, all the same rules apply to programming in newer uh, frameworks like Node.js, as they apply to Java, for example. Validate input. Uh, and um, uh, be careful with um, with strings. Okay, so this is it. Uh, questions, thank yous, uh, um, praises. You know what's the best thing to do? Is to stop by our booth. You can uh, you can win Beats headphones. All right. Thanks, guys.